Hello everyone, this is going to be a guide to the new alliance raid Thalea, where we're going to tackle the bosses Thaliac, Limelin, Oshan, and finally, the last and most difficult boss of the entire alliance raid series, the baby Opo Opo. Just kidding, let's get right into it. The first boss is Thaliac, and he opens the fight with a raid wire called Cataractes. This is followed up by the ability Reognosis. During this, he will create sort of a copy of himself on one side of the arena, which is then going to propel the river at us, trying to knock us off. To avoid this, simply move to the site where the clone spawns. Next up is a stack marker, and that mechanic is followed up by left bank and right bank. This is just going to cleave one half of the arena, depending on which direction he's looking at. Alternatively, just look at the bowl of water in his hand, which is always going to be on the side where the cleave is going to spawn. Next, a bunch of players are going to get spread markers. Simply take these away from other spread markers and other players, and ideally leave a space in the middle for other people without markers to continue damaging the boss. Next up is a triple tank buster that's automatically going to target the tanks if they're alive. These are actually line AoEs, so make sure you have no one standing behind you, and if you're not a tank then please don't walk behind the tanks. Next up is Tetractus, and here I have to warn you, there's a lot of triangles. First the boss is going to designate a big triangle which is going to be the area that you have to maneuver in. If you walk out of that, I assume you're going to die. I haven't tried it. Maybe he's going to banish you to endless geometry class. You can see that the big triangle is spread into multiple smaller triangles, which we're going to use to dodge the upcoming AoEs. These come in the form of these small triangles that are then going to expand. There's only two types here, so this really isn't too difficult. The small ones will fill out exactly one of the smaller triangles inside the big triangle, and the big green triangle is going to fill out exactly four triangles in one of the corners of the big triangle. And all you have to do is simply run to the opposite side. Next up is a mechanic called Tetractus Cosmos, which is going to spawn triangles that will then project line AoEs along the sides of the triangle. Meaning the first time this happens, the safe spot is going to be on the corner of the triangle. Next up, there's going to be two of these. One of them is always going to be perfectly in the corner of the big triangle, and one of them is going to be further into the middle. To find the safe spot, stand on the corner of the one that is more into the middle, and then look out because from the side where the other triangle AoE is nestled into the corner, your safe spot triangle is going to get cut in half, so stand back a little bit. Next up is Reognosis Petrine, where again, he's going to spawn a clone on one side of the arena, and again, you're going to get knocked back. However, this time one half of the arena is also going to be unsafe. To figure out which one that is, on the side where the clone spawns, look down the river and you're going to see big markers. Simply go on the side where these are not. Next up is a mechanic called Hieroglyphica, which happens twice. First of all, we're going to get multiple safe spots inside of this checkerboard pattern on the arena. But after a short moment, the boss is going to rotate this pattern in the direction that the arrows indicate. For melee DPS, the best safe spot is always going to be one that is not in the corner, because in the corners you can't have melee uptime. Whereas the other safe spots are always going to allow you to have full uptime. Next, the boss is going to combine this with either right bank or left bank. So first of all, you want to solve right bank or left bank and simply go to the opposite side of where the cleave is going to spawn and then find the Hieroglyphica safe spot within that safe side. From here, it's just the same mechanics until you defeat the boss. The next boss is Limelin and she'll open up the fight with a raid wide AoE called Tempest. This is followed up by two mechanics called Sea Foam Spiral as well as Wind Rose. Seafoam Spiral is a donut AoE, meaning you just have to walk right under the boss. And Wind Rose is a point blank circular AoE, meaning you have to move away from the boss. As a tip for all melee players, if you stay at max melee range, as long as you move back immediately when the AoE spawns, you're always going to be able to dodge it, allowing you to have full uptime during this. Next up is Navigator's Trident, which is going to cleave one half of the arena and then the other. This kind of works like left bank, right bank from the previous boss, except obviously both of the sides are channeled at the same time, meaning you'll have to remember to switch over immediately. Next up, she'll spawn this knockback. Simply stay away from the middle part because I think that's going to kill you, and then get knocked back to the sides of the arena. Afterwards, you'll want to run towards her because she can spawn either sea foam spiral or wind rose, and if it's sea foam spiral, you'll obviously want to be close to her already. Then she's going to spawn a knockback, Simply stand on this green marker that they've placed here and get knocked down the bowling alley. Next you'll want to face the boss and run for your life because a huge wave spawns behind you. There are also these balls of water that you'll want to dodge while you get closer to the boss. Next she's going to cast left straight or right straight. Simply stand on the opposite side. Alternatively stand opposite to the side where she's pointing with her trident. This is followed up first by an AoE marker and then our next major mechanic which consists of these tridents landing in the ground 
and in the order that they land, they will then project huge circular AOEs around themselves. So just look for where the last trident lands and then move into the safe spot created by the first explosion. Next, a bunch of AOEs are going to spawn under your characters that you'll want to move out of, and that is followed by AOE markers on various players. Next, she's going to spawn her two water snake dragons, and they're going to project line AOEs along the side of the arena, indicated by these markers right here. In addition to that, she's going to cast either Wind Rose or Sea Foam Spiral, so you'll have to solve that at the same time. So stand between the AOE markers on the side, and then solve Wind Rose or Sea Foam Spiral. The Dragon Water Snake thingies are going to keep projecting AOEs throughout the arena, so keep looking around yourself. You can also listen for the audio cue of splashing water. During this, there's also going to be left straight and right straight. The boss isn't stationary during all of this, and the tanks obviously have to dodge, so she tends to be turned in a specific direction. So for left straight, right straight, you'll have to look at her to determine where the safe spot actually is. Immediately afterwards, two more line AoEs are going to get projected from the side of the arena, and various AoEs are going to spawn under players' feet again. This is followed up by a raid wide AoE called Godsbane, and then we're getting another knockback. This time, however, there's only one safe side for this knockback, because the other side is going to get cleaved by the Sea Dragon Snake AoEs, while the other side is just going to get split in half. Next, it's time for Bowling Alley 2.0. Again, you'll have to dodge a point blank AoE or a donut AoE, and then get knocked back. Again, you'll have to face the boss and run for your life again. However, this time there's going to be AoE spawning on either side of the path back. Just remember the order in which they appear, and then dodge them accordingly as they spawn afterwards. And that's all the mechanics for this boss. The next boss is Oshon, who is going to open up with a raid wide AoE. This is going to be followed up by a mechanic you'll see multiple times throughout this fight. You see him projecting a triangular AoE, and there's kind of a path tracking to one side of the arena with an arrow pointing into the arena from that spot. Basically all that means is he's going to jump to that side of the arena and then project the same AoE in the direction of the arrows. So in this case, the safe spot is right next to where he lands. Next, he's going to cast Reproduce, which is going to create a clone of him. Again, the same idea applies. He's projecting a triangular AoE and he's jumping to one side of the arena, so simply dodge next to the arrow. Next, the boss jumps back into the middle of the arena and there's a big stack marker. If you have the stack marker, please run close to the boss so everyone that's melee can keep damaging the boss. This is followed up by Soaring Minuet, which is going to project an AoE around the boss, except for one side where it's going to be safe. You can see the safe side by looking at the green markers around the boss. That's followed up by a tank buster. Because everyone's a bit grouped up, you'll have to spread out a little bit. I found that people panic during this, so if you're a tank, just stand still if people are running around you like chickens and let them dodge instead. Next, the boss is going to cast Reproduce again, and this time he's going to create two copies of himself that are both going to project triangular AoEs into the arena. The safe corner is always going to be the one that ends up between the two triangles. So if the triangles are going to move left, then the left corner is also the safe spot. This is followed up by another AoE before the boss casts Downhill and Climbing Shot. This is going to create small circular AoEs, as well as a knockback from the middle of the arena. You can try getting knocked into a safe spot, or alternatively just use your knockback mitigation. Using your knockback mitigation on this also has the advantage of you already being in position for the next mechanic, which is another Soaring Minuet. Next is another stack marker, followed by another track shot. Before the boss transitions into sort of a phase 2. The first mechanic here will see him anchor into the ground in two spots. One of them is going to be closer to the boss and one of them is going to be further away. All you want to do is stand away from where he anchors to the ground because that's going to be a circular AoE. This is followed up by Altitude, which just projects AoE markers throughout the arena. These are going to disappear quickly, so you'll have to pay attention, move to the safe spot and just stay there until the mechanic is over. This is followed up by another stack marker as well as a wandering shot. Now this looks way more complicated than it really is. Basically, he's shooting two arrows, and at the point where they meet, they're going to create a circular AoE. All you'll have to do is dodge forwards or backwards based on where the AoE is going to get created. This is followed up by some huge tank busters. Next is Arrow Trail, which is going to create a damaging field of arrows that will travel down whatever area he just marked. 
In addition to that, small circular AoEs are going to spawn around the arena randomly as well, which you'll have to dodge while all of this is going on. So here you'll simply have to move from one arrow trail marker to the other as soon as they've passed you and you're going to be safe. This is going to be followed up with another one of these anchor AoEs. And next is perhaps the most confusing of all the mechanics. Essentially, there are three things happening right here. First of all, we have the knockback from the middle. This works exactly the same way as Limelin's knockback if you remember that from the last fight. Additionally, there's going to be the mechanic where two arrows are hitting each other on one side of the arena, creating a huge circular AoE, which you'll have to stand on the opposite side of. And in addition to those two, there's going to be AoE markers on the side of the arena. It's worth noting here that the knockback can be avoided with knockback mitigation as well. So the order in which I personally solve this is look at the big circular arrow AoE and run to the opposite side. Then make sure you're not getting thrown out of the arena by the knockback. And optionally also make sure that you don't get hit by the AoE markers on the side of the arena after getting knocked into them. And that's all the mechanics for this fight. Then it's time for the last boss called Eulogia. She opens up the fight with Dawn of Time, which is a raid-wide AoE. Then she's going to cast first form, second form and third form. Each of these is going to create a set of arrows going from one point to another. This is the direction she's going to travel. When she reaches the ends of each of the paths, she's going to project AoEs, either a right cleave, a left cleave or a donut AoE. To figure out which one it is, you'll have to look at the boss. You can see the shapes around her. So if the shape is on the right hand side from where she's facing, then the AoE is going to be on the right side of wherever she's traveling. She'll do that twice, and then there's going to be a set of tank busters. Simply solve these as usual. The Whirl will create a big raid-wide AoE and also transition the arena. Next, four moons are going to spawn that are at different stages of being lit up. The ones that are most lit up are going to be the first ones to project a line AoE into the arena. The lines on the floor in the arena will help you figure out where these AoEs are going to land. So by using these lines, you can actually have full melee uptime during this mechanic as well. You can see how I can stand next to this line and just move a slight little bit to be safe from the next AoE. Next up is Solar Fans, which you might already know from one of the previous Alliance raids. Two flaming fans are going to travel around you on the side of the arena, and when they eventually come to a halt, they're going to project huge circular AoEs around themselves. To dodge this, just stand on top of the boss until they stop moving, and then move slightly out to one side where there are no fans. Next up, some knockbacks are going to spawn, they're numbered 1, 2, and 3, and they're going to go off in that order, except one of them will have a little clock in front of it, which means that it's actually the one that goes off first. Next is a stack marker that deals huge damage. We have Hieroglyphica from the Thaliac fight, which is solved exactly the same way. Except she's also casting Fist of the Destroyer, which you might remember from the Raga fight. Basically, there are two colored portals on the side of the arena and two portals right under her. Whichever small colored portal she punches into will create an AoE on the same colored portal on the side of the arena. These two mechanics don't happen at the same time, but they happen right after one another. So you don't have to worry about these portals while you're solving Hieroglyphica. Matron's Breath is from the Novika fight, if I remember correctly. Here there are two safe spots on the arena, the blue side and the yellow side. On one side of the arena, you'll have four colored and numbered markers spawn. And your entire goal here is to stand in the same color of the marker that is going off at that time. So if the order is blue, yellow, blue, yellow, then you'll want to move from the blue safe spot to the yellow safe spot to the blue safe spot to the yellow safe spot and so on. Next we'll get the mechanic with the tridents from earlier that are going to project circular AoEs around themselves. Simply move to wherever the last trident spawns and then move into the safe spot created by the first trident explosion. Burgot Strike will create a knockback which comes in the form of this blue marker. So you'll want to move next to it and aim it so you don't get knocked out of the arena. At the same time, you see these yellow markers around the boss. These are going to be projected from the position where she eventually ends up at, which is the blue AoE marker. So find a spot around the knockback marker that is not going to get cleaved by that. Next is Thousandfold Thrust, which is going to cleave one half of the arena. Just look at the red markers around her, which are going to group up and point in one direction, which is going to be the one that the AoE is going to get projected in. As above, so below, will deal massive raid-wide damage and also turn the sky around the arena either orange or blue, although so far I've only seen the orange variation, so I'm not sure if the other one even exists. 
Next, a few AoE markers are going to spawn through the center of the arena. Only the ones equal to the color of the sky are going to go off. So if the sky is orange, then only the orange markers are going to go off, meaning you can stand next to a blue marker and be completely safe. At the same time, however, there's a knockback. You could try and get yourself knocked into a safe spot. However, you can also just use your knockback mitigation and just completely avoid this entire mechanic. And again, that really helps because the next mechanic is Soaring Minuet, which is the same one that Oshron used earlier. All you'll have to do is stand behind the boss to be safe from this cleave again. Lastly, there's going to be massive raid-wide damage. And from here, it's just repeating mechanics until you defeat the boss. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please consider leaving a like so other people can find it too. For now, thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Peace.